we all have imposter syndrome. If you don't have imposter syndrome, and if you don't have self-doubts, I doubt that you're going to put the effort into uh, realizing what's good and what's bad about what you do and improving. I work in Whitley Chapel, Northumberland, and this is my workshop. Originally, I played in folk song clubs. Uh, I played guitar and sang. I really loved guitars, and I loved the sound of guitars. And unlike some people, I was very focused on the sound and not just on the notes they were playing. And I thought maybe I could build something that would have a different kind of sound. And that's how I started. That's how I built citterns. And these were flat-backed, teardrop-shaped instruments with pairs of metal strings. Well, I went about it just by a mixture of common sense and, and arrogance, really. I had, in fact, some, ex some experience of woodwork and a belief that if you thought hard enough, you could do anything. So people wanted to buy them. By this time, I had stopped singing folk song clubs and I, I needed an income. So I did hit some problems. I used the wrong kind of glue, which in the hot summers of 75, 76 started failing to the point where I was worried about answering the telephone in case it was someone saying, my citizens come apart. But when these things broke, I fixed them. I mean, I did become a workaholic. I learnt from the things that had gone wrong and changed the design so that hopefully they wouldn't go wrong again. And that actually taught me something, Bruce. Learning what doesn't work puts you on the road to what does work. It was tough at the time, because these would be irreversible uh, modifications at a time when we were absolutely penniless. I have all this wood that I've bought years and years ago crazy really just because i was worried that i'd run out of i'd run out of wood i didn't buy it to keep it as a stock but now i'm selling it off because uh, i'm never going to use all this well the wood is very important the holy grail has always been or has been for the last 50 years that i've been building instruments has been brazilian rosewood the best brazilian rosewood has a great ring and does give a very nice sound what, what's important about it, and we'll tell you if it's going to make a decent guitar, is does it ring? If it's got a metallic ring, that's, if you build it right, that'll make, turn into a nice guitar. Now this is African blackwood, which doesn't have the same sort of ring as the Brazilian rosewood when it's flat, but put, throwing it into this curve, gives it that metallic ring. It's also got a deeper resonance below. I don't know if you can hear that. It's almost like two. There's the sharp one and there's a deeper one. And that, that does give a different sound and a really good sound. That's what helps you get magic into a guitar. You can get guitars that play <laughs> all the right notes, even in all the right order, uh, in tune, but no, nothing, nothing that grabs you. And the other other guitar sounds, you go oh, and that's that's how I feel about guitars, and it's how I want my customers to feel about my guitars. So, I'm trying to make guitars that make them feel like that. See, because this is curved, so that line, this side here, goes up, down, and up again. I copy that curve onto the sides take it down and I make sure this fits exactly onto it rather than forcing it into place which would introduce stress into it. It is the same sort of thing, no stress in instruments, no stress in life. The stress of trying to do a corporate job would not help me. And there are, there are stresses in being self-employed, especially when you're hard up, especially when money's tight. But overall, yeah, not something I'd thought of before, but it, it ties in, yes. 
the fact that when I start building a guitar, it's going to be three, three months at least before it's strung up and another two months before you hear what it really sounds like. That's astonishingly patient for someone like me because I'm not patient. But it just shows if there's something that you really care about, you have to put aside uh, some of your natural inclinations and just go with it. It's a very constructive way of, of keeping my demons at bay. We all have some demons and I'm doing it because I enjoy it. It's, it is soothing. What I have discovered is that you can do better and better work just by refining what you do. You look at it harder. You, you take a little bit more time. You, you think about it, it, because I do believe that so much of what's called craftsmanship is just extreme common sense. And it's looking at things, deciding, is that right, is it not right? If it isn't right, what am I going to do about it? It's not just a question of doing the same thing better all the time. It's a question of, is this the best way to do it? Nothing in this world is perfect. And one of, one of the things I've learned generally in life is that you have to love things as they are, downsides included, take it as a whole. To me, there isn't much magic in this world. And if you come across some magic, like a guitar that sounds brilliant in most areas, go with the magic, enjoy that, and work around anything that, that isn't quite as perfect as you'd like it to be. I believe that in life generally. Oh, it's always a journey. I'm, a, I'm along the way. It's, I've got a lot further than when I started, but there's, you always think it could be better. Like the guitars I'm building now, I'm, I'm very happy with them, but I still think maybe there's a better one to be built. And if there is, I'd love to build it. Mm -hmm.